Howdy, you're watching Bare Knuckle Binder. Welcome to the channel. Uh, like and subscribe if you like working on junky old international trucks. Uh, today, I'm starting on a project that I've been threatening for a long time. Finally got it in the garage. Uh, this is going to be going on Della, the S160 4x4. The first cross-country Bare Knuckle Binder adventure from 2021. So, let's get into this. Hot dang, nine foot bed. And not only is this a nine foot bed, this is a Canadian nine foot bed. So the big difference with the Canadian nine foot bed or Canadian beds at this time is that they have international on the front panel of the bed there, just like they do on the tailgate. So with the US bed, that, that front panel, that front panel will just be three, uh, equidistant squares so um it's kind of a nerdy little detail it's nice i gotta get a new phone i look old anyway um what i'm planning to do with this bed i am planning to take this thing down to panels i'm about to drill out all the spot welds so that i'm just working with basically four flat panels and all the the you know intricacies the fenders take it all apart work out all the dents, patch all the rust damage, and go from there. Now, my buddy in Canada, Dan, found this bed for me. He, it was on the frame of a truck that was getting turned into a hot rod and they wanted a shorter bed for it. And they were about to chop this bed up to shorten it. And he's like, no, I got a buddy in Texas who needs this bed. Uh, and he found them a shorter bed and we worked out a deal and I went up there and got this last year. So I've had this bed for going on a year almost now um, and if you've been following me on Instagram for a while you know that my buddy Brian in western Iowa found me a nine foot bed that was sitting in a cow pasture that his friend had and his friend uh, this older gentleman is actually this bed he thought was so far gone that he was just stuffing it full of trash he's about to haul off to the dump so he just ended up giving me that bed super awesome appreciate that thing is so now I've got two nine foot beds one US one Canadian uh, and now I could go into this with the idea of making one good bed out of two. Uh, but really the thing that's really messed up on these beds is the same on both beds. So what I'm planning to do is I'm planning to save both beds. Uh, but this is the bed that will go on Della. Now the other bed is red, so it nearly paint matches and patina everything on Della, the old fire truck. But the problem with that is that to actually repair these beds and make them usable, I'm gonna have to take them down to bare metal. So the color really doesn't matter. So uh, I'll just end up, you know, paint matching Della's paint, which I believe looking at the line setting ticket was Swift Red instead of like Harvester Red. But we'll see. That's That bridge is so far away, we don't have to worry about crossing it yet. So anyway, uh, this bed right now, uh, I just want to walk around it and show you some stuff. I'll put in some edits of the, the other nine foot bed, the red nine foot bed. I'm about to go up there to where I'm keeping that and walk around it and show you some stuff. But let's get into this one. Let me talk about how I'm going to take this thing apart. This first things first, I'm going to take the fenders off. I'm going to take the floor out. This floor is not original. Obviously my buddy Dan put this in here basically to hold this thing together. And I hauled a bunch of parts back from Canada with it you know, like a, a spare green diamond motor and all kinds of stuff. Once I get that apart, then I'm going to work on either getting this bed off of the frame and pulling the trailer frame out of here, uh, or while it's up in the air a little bit, work on taking the spot welds out of it. Now these beds, uh, they have the front panel, they have the side panels, uh, tailgate. We're not including in this. That's a, pulls off and we'll deal with that on its own fenders we're going to call those extra two so the main components of this bed are the front panel two side panels four corners and the floor uh, and with the floor you have basically a steel floor now this obviously i said is a canadian bed and my buddy dan has showed me some stuff that in canada these beds were optional with a wood floored bed, you know, like with the strips, like an old GMC or Chevy would have in the fifties. But all the U S beds came with a steel bed, the ribbed steel bed. Um, 
So how those beds were made, or at least how we make them now, is that they're bent with the ribs in two pieces and then welded in a straight seam down the center. So I'm gonna cross that bridge when I get to it, but then underneath that rib bed are two different styles of cross members that hold the whole bed together. Um, knowing how these things are put together obviously is a prerequisite to taking them apart and then putting them back together. And also, if you have the actual measurements, the factory measurements of what these beds are, that really helps. And luckily we do. Check out that graphic right there. It has all the measurements for the three sizes of 1950 to 57 beds. So we're gonna use that and then we're gonna go through when we put this thing back together. I'll go through and I'll measure this bed and show you how far off it actually is because even though this bed looks fairly straight, it is really, you know, it's, you know, you can see a bow in that front and it's, I mean, it's seen some use. It's, it's got some abuse on it. So we're gonna try to bring it back to close as perfect as we can get it. Uh, it's definitely flared out on the tops and I can tell that by trying to close the tailgate because I have to kind of push the two top panels together to get that tailgate to latch in there. So anyway, I'm gonna start by pulling these fenders off and then I'm gonna get into the floor and then I'm going to start drilling out spot welds. That might not all take place today. Actually, I can guarantee it won't, but I can get these fenders off and uh, possibly the floor out. Now, as far as spot welds, uh, and I was talking about the, the three different panels, the four corners, and the floor. Let's talk about how these are put together. So you've got this front panel, let's say. Let's start there, it's easy. Um, now, the side panel comes up and it's bent over, metal break there, and then spot welded in, right? And then on the outside, your corner braces all that together so you can see the divots of the spot welds going down this thing and then it bends over got a metal break here and you can see the spot weld divots there this thing is definitely throwing some flies in the ointment there uh, that's not factory so then the stake pockets once you pull this thing off that stake pocket will be exposed and that's just spot welded in there so we'll get to see what the stake pockets look like once the corner's off. We'll get all this thing apart. I can show you what my plans are for repairing this, which is, which I think is a pretty interesting project because how this comes apart, it comes up, you know, you have your divots that are pressed in, your indentations, and then, I mean, this thing is just curled around down to a, to where it, it spot welds in on here. So we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to repair a lot of this stuff on top here. I still, I'm, this is a really cool hole. There's another one on the other side that looks like a, a bullet hole, but there's no, there's no hole in the fender right below it. So there's a, there's a dent on the other fender. So I don't know how they made that, but or why they made that, but we'll get there. Um, let's see. So here in the back, same thing. You got these corners. Of course, on this one, you know, you, you brings in the tailgate into question, <clears throat> but the rear corners actually, it's kind of the same as the front here, but then it's uh, spot welds up to the rear panel right here. So they all meet right here. Um, this is obviously an add-on. This is an add-on, but this is actually the original taillight bracket. Uh, that's where the original taillight would go. So we got to weld something in there and patch that in. So anyway, let's get these fenders off and, uh, see where we're at.
All right, so I've got the light on this thing so you can see it better now that we got the fender off. Uh, this one is actually in pretty decent shape under here. This metal, it's here in the wheel well. It's, at all, it's pretty solid down to this point. Now down to this point, it comes down, and it's got a, let's see if we can get the light in there to see. It's got a, a lip, it's bent in on the bottom. It goes around that contour, but on the inside, it's got a lip. Now, what's interesting about how this is rotted out here is that it shows you the end of one of the two types of cross members. Now, now it just rusted right off of here, and so this cross member seems to be in actually pretty great shape. Uh, we'll see what it looks like on the other side, but once we get the other fender off and the floor out, we'll know more. All right, so the board's out, fender's off. Uh, these boards I'm gonna actually use to make decking for my rafters up there because I store a ton of parts up there and uh, it's just gonna make it all easier and I don't have to throw them away. They're really not too much good for anything else at this point. Back to the actual bed itself. Uh, Pulling this thing apart, uh, now you can see the cross members. And the thing about these cross members is that there's two kinds. There's hat channel right here, hat channel, and there's Z channel. The Z channel are actually the cross members that mount to the frame. Hat channel only mounts to the bed floor. Um, I've found a place here in Austin that can bend these up for me. Uh, I've considered making some type of a metal break that will make these just so I don't have to, you know, outsource it. Uh, but making hat channels actually pretty uh, involved. Like, a, I think it uses a press break or uh, whatever it's called. I can't remember off the top of my head. You know, I just start, I just press record and I start doing this and I'm talking and here's words. So... Any bed made from 1950 to early 57 uses these same cross members. And the only difference is the number that they use. Of course, a nine foot bed uses the most because it's the longest. So you're gonna have two Z channels in the front and the Z channels, I'll show you on the red bed as well. This one, Dan had to add uh, some angle iron so it's a little obscured, but there's a bolt right here and a bolt on the other side, that that's what it bolts the frame. This here is the original frame of the truck. So, bolt, Z channel, Z channel, hat channel, Z channel, hat channel, hat channel, and then there should be two Z channels in the back that are actually, uh, they look like they're missing on this one. Uh, it was pretty rotted out in the back. And then there's gonna be a C channel that caps the end of the bed. So, um, the Z channel and the hat channel, uh, you know, Z channel is kind of shaped like a Z hat channel. The cross section, it looks like a hat. Uh, the way that they're connected at the end is that they cut them and they flange them out and then they spot weld the flanges. Let me show you how that works. Right here, you can see how Coming up here, they flange that out, they spot weld it in, flange that out, spot welded it in. Uh, they didn't do anything on the end here, it's just those two flaps. And then on the Z channel here, they flap this one out and flap that one down. Uh, so these are, what is it, 54 and a half? 
across and these ones in between here are 48 and a half uh, in between the wheel wells there so those are the measurements i mean what is it like that looks like about a half to three quarter of an inch maybe flat and uh so i mean you just had to cut them a little long once you get the, that channel made and then just you know notch them and, and bend them back and weld them in uh so i guess point out real quick right here what this is this is the steel bed and that's why all this stuff rots out right here because dirt and moisture and everything gets you know piled up you can see it was piled up to here it roughs out right there there's a moisture line but this is the top of the bed and what it is, it's like this is the top of the rib. So it comes over here and then ribs down and it would be spot welded here, ribs up, ribs down. So this actually gives us the measurement to here to here for the depth of the floor. But of course that is provided in our beautiful graphic that tells you what it is. So right now, I really I just have to get after it with the spot weld to start taking this thing apart. My goal is to do here is to pull this apart so I at least have one or two good cross members of each kind, like a good Z channel and a nice good hat channel so that I can do my best to duplicate them exactly. There might be one or two good ones on the red bed I'll look at that just here in a minute. We'll, we'll go out there and look at that. But let's get the measurements on this bed first. All right, so I got the boards out. I can start measuring this thing and check that out. Hat channel came out complete. So that's one. It's pretty cool. So now we know the measurement uh, because of our handy little graphic. Ta-da! So this should be 48 and a half inches from flange to flange. Boom, 48 and a half inches. So we know that this thing is, is dead on in size. So let's take a look at the rest of the bed. It's 48 and a half inches at the bottom because that, the other hat channel just came right out of there. At the top, though, this thing should be 54 and a half inches across. So let's measure that and see what we're at. 55 and a half. So she's an inch out on top. Like we've got an inch extra. So oh, let's see back here. Let's see at the back of the bed. 55 with a flare out of those stake pockets. Almost 56. So it was say 55 and three quarters towards the back. So that's pretty, that's out. I mean, that's why I'm having a hard time closing the, the tailgate. What do we got up here? It's hard to measure it on the stake pockets because they typically flare out right there. But let's see right above here. See towards the front, it's, it's more, it's just under 55. There's definitely gonna have to be some correction putting this thing back together. So you can see that it's out. Uh, a lot of it's denting, some of it's warping, you know, it's just this bed was used. So, but we'll get her back into spec. The thing is that the way you want it to be back into spec is like, let's say you wanted to do this fast and loose and just get it done. And it was not really dead on. First off, that's not how we do things around here. And second, Let's say down the road, I find a set of nine foot bed Ataraks, the factory stake pocket bed extensions. Unless this thing is dead on to factory sizing, those aren't gonna fit. And that would just be terrible. So I'm gonna do it right. I'm gonna do it once, I'm gonna take the extra time. I'll show you one thing this bed appears to be missing. Uh, in comparison to a U.S. bed, which I'll show you on the red bed as soon as we get out there. But there's usually what I call skid plates that go, there's two of them in the back, on the back two Z channels, and then there should be some up front. Now, up here, 
those look like the skid plates, but they're longer than what I'm used to seeing. And I don't know if that's a discrepancy between U.S. and Canadian bids, but uh, what the skid plates do is that they uh, reinforce the bed where it mounts to the frame. Uh, and I'll show you those on the red bed. But uh, that's one thing that I'm noticing about this bed that's different. Most of it appears to be pretty much exactly the same. One thing uh, I'll mention real quick is that you see this steel bed floor that's cut straight down the side there. Um, when Dan found this bed in Canada, it had, uh, it looked like it had a wood floor that had been rotted out and it had the, the strips that go down like like in a 50s Chevy or GMC. And I was like, man, there's no way that that thing was a, originally a wood floored bed. And he found, like I said earlier, he found that wood floored beds were an option in Canada. Now, I don't know that a wood floored bed would have steel sides. It seems like, I don't know. I mean, it's just, Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, if anybody here is a Canadian viewer and they have a wood floored bed, like a factory wood floored bed in a 50 to 57 to early 57, like an LRS series truck that has a wood floored bed, I'd love to see it. I'm assuming that this bed started out life as a steel floor. It rotted out, got damaged, whatever. And then they replaced the floor with wood and put the strips in. All right, so one important thing to note about the nine foot beds. If you're looking across a field, as often we are at old junk trucks in the wild, a nine foot bed is the easiest bed to see and to identify across the field because a nine foot bed is the only bed that has these indents. It's got one in the front, it's got one in the back. Now, this main indent here, surrounding the fender, that is the exact same size as the one that's around the eight foot bed. So, in theory, an eight foot bed is exactly a nine foot bed just without these. What does that mean? It means that if you had a patch panel of this, you could convert an eight foot bed to a nine foot bed. One reason that's important is because nine foot beds are not as numerous as six or eight foot beds. Uh, they're not unicorn rare. I don't think they're worth thousands of dollars, so don't let somebody tell you that. But they're harder to find, and sometimes it's easier to make something if you can't find it. So that's one thing. Second thing, these indents, every indent on these beds, whether it's the front, whether it's the tailgate, whether it's the sides, whether it's the top or the bottom, the only exception being the indent that goes around the wheel well. All of these are the same depth and this radius is the same. So it occurred to me several months back that if I made a patch panel, like a press die patch panel of that, then I could A, convert an eight foot bed to a nine foot bed, B, have a patch panel, it's so like, Let's say I have a patch panel of this, just cut out the bottom, just cover this in, weld, weld it in, you know, just total rust repair right there. However, it's far more useful when you see that if you press out, let's say I press out like 20 of these, I could repair this entire bed because A, you have the indent, you have like 16 inches almost of indent right here that, you know, you could put anywhere you needed to along here any corner, let's say here, I need to replace this right here because it looks pretty rough. I could take a patch panel with this area right here, cut it out, flip it sideways, patch that in right there. So, ta-da, I made a CAD file for the press die for this. Uh, what I did is I, I got up to the edge of the indent and how I did that on the red bed that I'm about to go show you is that I took magnets with right angles and just pushed them up to the point, the edge, and then I measured across that. And they did the same thing on the inside and measured on the outside of the magnets. So I got the exact measurements, uh, the exact depth, 
I've got a buddy who said he would get those cut out for me. Isaac Icy Weld was over here hanging out with me the other day. And we talked about how to do it. And I think for this amount of steel, or in this grade of steel, you need about 55 tons of press to get it to, to behave. And Isaac said he's got a 65 ton press. So if I can get the dies made, uh, we'll go over there one day and just press out a bunch of them. And then that'll really put this project ahead. The other thing about that, just like the channels, uh, it seems like if I can make something like that, that would definitely be of use to everyone in the international harvester community. But let's get it done first, and then we'll talk about availability of these parts. And, uh, yeah. So let's go look at this red bed. All right, nine foot bed number two. Oh, got some help. Is Evie. Evie is eight months old. Anyway, so, got a nine foot bed here. You can see this one. All right, hold on. This one is pretty rusted out there. The bed floor is unusable, obviously toast to the front. There's your, your three equidistant US squares. Uh, see, I've cut cross sections out of this these cross members here um, so that I can uh, get them duplicated. Um, yeah, so this, this is going to present a challenge. It's all dead. What are you doing? You're crazy. There's an eight foot bed. That's actually what those fenders are off of. And this one, you can see the indents here. I'm talking about that one and that one crazy dog uh they're the same so that if you were to add that end cap piece these little indents here the nine foot indents at the front and back you can convert an eight foot to a nine foot so fun stuff but yeah so this is the u.s nine foot that i'm working with so once i get the uh once i get the canadian one the yellow one spot welds cut out and and uh all the panels separated then i will come back and i'll probably put this right on the trailer and uh haul this one into the garage the same way uh actually right now it's pretty easy to see here how the front this is how the front z channel has a hole drilled in it one drilled over there, and that's what mounts the frame. Uh, let me see if I can get these skid plates. So these are the skid plates I'm talking about. Uh, there's two there in the back. And on the inside one, you can see where the mounting holes are. This one is missing the end cap like the yellow one is, but I actually have the end cap for this one because when I was in Iowa, uh, picking this one up, I found it sitting in the bed, and it kind of looked like something that might go with it, so I grabbed it. And it just so happened that that was part of this bed. So, this bed, I mean, it's got some really good parts of it. Also, the original taillight bracket that they moved from down there up to here. But it's cool here because this is all cut out of the Canadian bed, but this gives me the uh, the pattern of what I need to replace it with. So, yeah, that's that's no good, but definitely not the end of the world. Lots of sheet metal repair to, to do on this one, on both of them. But uh, yeah, should be that too bad. These spare tire carriers, huh? This one's gonna be a challenge right here, this dent. Because it's denting through here. I'm thinking on this one, I might even have to cut this all out 
and uh, straighten it up or get or match it and then weld in a patch there. In the meantime, just pound that flat, get it as straight as I can with a hammer and dolly. So, I just think these nine foot beds are so cool. They're just, there's something different, but when they're on a truck, man, it's like a, bed's like a hallway. So long. Quick look at this uh, eight foot bed. This shows you the, the really nice condition bed, actually. Uh, it's got the uh, the ribs, shows the ribs, what they look like. And this is the end cap. Now that goes together. And I love these. It's old trailer connections. So I'm actually going to put that one of those on the Coleman and one on Della's bed when I get it done. Uh, anyway, might rob that one off of there. This is actually gonna go on a uh, six foot bed. Hey, you're back. Uh, going on a six foot bed trailer that I have. And that six foot bed is just pretty much garbage. But that one I might actually be able to uh, harvest for parts or patch panels or whatever. And this one, if all goes well and I get really ambitious, I might convert this one to a nine foot bed just to show it can be done. But let's get these nine foot beds actually repaired before I start getting all pie in the sky on you. All right, so I think that's a pretty good first part of the nine foot bed uh, rebuild series. Uh, we've got a good start on this one. <clears throat> uh, we've seen how it comes apart, or in, more importantly, how it goes back together. As a basic overview, we'll get more into that, obviously. I mean, it's going to become an obsession over the next couple of episodes. Uh, but a lot of it is going to be now me drilling out these spot welds. I don't know if that's really something that's very interesting to watch on video. But um, definitely, uh, definitely excited about this project. I definitely uh, I think this is going to be a really cool thing to get into. Uh, I've never seen anybody post anything about completely taking an international bed apart so hopefully this can help some people too so like and subscribe if you like it uh keep your mouth shut if you don't and then uh we'll see you in the next episode take care